Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> so to catch the recording up real quick, we've gone a little bit over what HTML is, that hypertext markup language, how HTML structures the content on our page. And we've gone a little bit over what CSS is, cascading style sheets, how uh, CSS uh, is going to dis uh, display and design the content that's on our page brought in by HTML. And these two things working together are going to bring our website alive and, and give it a sense of depth and a sense of personality. The first step to developing a website uh, is wireframing. Wireframing is displaying or coming up with an understanding of what we want our web page to look like and what content will be on it. Wireframing can be as simple as taking a piece of paper and drawing out what you, web, you want your website to be like, or it can be coming up with a, a really advanced copy of what you want to build on Photoshop or another tool like that. Today, we're going to have a wireframe that I will share with all of you, but I'm also going to show first. And this is our wireframe. Okay. In most companies, there will be a user interaction, a user experience, so UI, UX designer who will come up with a wireframe and be providing these to developers. UX designers, user experience designers, have studied how people use the web applications and the things that help making the uh, applications easier to the users and to all who are going to be interacting with it. Web pages typically have three things. They have a header, they have a body, and they have a footer. The header is something that is used to grab the attention of the user. Here we can see we have Peppermint Patty, Charlie Brown's good friend, an all around solid person. The body, in this case, is a bunch of scribbles and some interactive moments. Maybe we're, today we're going to call these cards, and that's what Bootstrap is going to call them as well, a picture with some information about it. And this all together makes up our body from beginning paragraph all the way down to the last part of this paragraph. This is going to be informational content. You can think of this as the Wikipedia article. You could think of this as your blog space, uh, where your actual blogs would be written, whatever you want this to be. And then lastly, we have a footer. This is going to be copyright information, company information, personal links to your LinkedIn or to your uh, to a, a repository or maybe to your Instagram so they can follow more photos of you if they want. Whatever you want that to you want the user to know in the footer. So again, web pages typically have three things: the header, the body, and the footer. Any question about this wireframe? The wireframe is really useful because essentially what we can do as developers now is we can build this to spec. And once we're done with that, start tweaking it however we like. Uh, that way we have a goal to hit. We know we have say what we could call maybe a minimum viable product. And then we can keep moving on from there while it's already working. Uh, can I ask you a question? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so just to clarify, so a wireframing is kind of like an outline, but for web development. Exactly. So yeah. another person, the user experience person, they would provide you as the developer, like, here's the outline. This is what we're trying to see. And that could, that could or could not include like how they visually want it to look, I guess, like the, uh, the CSS part, but like, this is the framework, at least, of what they're trying to do. Yeah. Okay. Depending on the level of involvement,
involvement that they're going to have. Generally, in my experience, a UI UX designer is going to have your color palette available to you, is going to have how things should be spaced and looked under certain circumstances, how they, what information should be presented in what ways, and then your job as a developer is to problem solve your way through that. So it can be kind of fun, actually, in that sense. I say kind of, it can be a lot of fun in that sense. So on the screen, uh, we so one of the things you can actually see up here is I have this tab. And you can see a number of tabs up here, which are things I'm, I was, you know, I'm planning on going through the day if we need it. I have the Google Chrome tab, the Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio Code tab. And this tab is going to be something we also are going to augment. Uh, as developers. In here, it says pick a lot. And this, is, this was uh, utilized for another project that we do here at Learn. The wireframe was for the pig Latin wireframe. We have the header, a paragraph section right here. This is going to be useful to remember because we're going to have a specific tag for this. Another paragraph section. We're going to have image content. Specifically, we're going to have three images, some paragraph sections with those images. We're going to have some headers of a kind, maybe some subheaders. And we're going to have another set of paragraphs. So it's just interesting to think about what am I looking at when I look at a web page and how, what kind of problem solving went into it. One of the main things to think about when you're looking at a website is how things are laid out. So you'll notice Peppermint Patty is like on this row and then Charlie Brown's Good Friends on a row. And then this paragraph is on its own row. But these cards are in columns. So how the interactions of rows and columns are happening. Once, you know, once I've mentioned this and you go looking around the internet, you're going to see this everywhere. Everywhere is trying to, uh, all developers are trying to uniquely incorporate rows and columns in ways that feel natural to you as the user. So that to the point where as a user, you won't notice it. A little bit of magic in that. Okay. That wraps up this section of getting started and getting introduced. Let me send this off. The, um, the chat for Zoom allows for file sharing. So I'm going to share that wireframe file. I'm also going to request that today that nobody else shares files unless it's been specifically vetted by one of the staff members, um, not because of any reason other than security. Any questions so far? Um, as far as this file, I assume we're going to bring it over to uh, VS. Is that um, just a drag and drop? Or this file is just an image. Um, you can have it wherever you like. Oh. This file is more for your reference point. Okay. And actually, all of the files for the rest of the day are files that we can make. To uh, we're going to make as individuals, but we'll be doing it together. Cool. Well, let's get started. So developing a website, it means we're going to create multiple files that will work together. Um, as Ross was pointing out that, you know, there's some things we're gonna need to bring into VS Code. 
So the first thing we do when we're making a new project is we need to make a directory. You probably know it as a folder uh, that's going to house the files that we're going to work on today. So we're going to do that together. Can everyone see my screen? Cool. I'm on a Mac. Uh, I believe this, this uh, process is very similar on PC. I just haven't used a PC since 2012. Uh, so it's been a minute. But on a Mac, all I'm going to do is I'm going to right click or double click on the, if you have a mouse pad, and I'm going to say new folder. In this new folder, I'm just going to call it build your first website. Punctuation and spelling are not terribly important. Other than the fact that you actually, let me take that back. Punctuation is actually kind of important. Please do not put an extension on the end of your file. No dot coms, no dot anything at the end of your file, just a normal file name, a folder name. All right. Is anybody not? made a folder that wants to. Cool. From here, I'm going to open up VS Code. And I should get a window that's somewhat similar to this, possibly has a bunch of information from VS Code that's saying, like, welcome to VS Code. Here's all these things. Get started with fundamentals. And at the top of which should be a little X on the tab that you can press and close. Any questions about this part? OK. From here, literally going to take my folder, drag, and drop into the VS Code. If this is not working for you, there's also the ability to open the folder from VS Code through the drop down menu. With that, is there anybody who has not gotten their workspace open that wants to? See a couple of people moving around. Would anybody like me to wait an extra minute? Cool. VS Code gives us a couple of options here. And one of them is this tiny little button that says new file. I want to click that button and in this text field, write index.html. Let 
make that a little bit bigger so everyone can see. So again, that button was the new file button. I'm inside of the project build your first website and my file name is index.html. And then press enter to create the file. When we give the extension .html, VS Code should change to these little angle brackets so that it's letting us know, hey, I know we're working in an HTML file. Index is a specific word that the browser understands to mean the first page. It was developed for HTML as the, as the landing page of HTML websites before, uh, at the very beginning, when the, when the developer, the engineers at CERN who were coming up, actually no, this is even before CERN, um, were thinking that you would have a large, like Rolodex of indexed files, if you remember an old Rolodex, that you can move through for websites. But websites have since kind of taken a different path, but we still keep this name index.html as the first and main page of our projects. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So does that mean that like, if you have a site that has like multiple pages, for example, does that mean that each page gets its own one of these? So there's a number of ways to go about that, but that is a possibility. Depending on the libraries that you're using that process the information, you could have a single page application like a, uh, what Facebook is built off of, where everything is different files, but they're all being loaded to the index HTML uh, one at a time, depending on, uh, on what ways they brought in. Or you could have a, a, a web page that is literally taking you to two new pages, depending on where you're navigating in your URL. So there's, there's a number of different ways to go about that. Good question. A word you'll hear frequently used is a landing page. And .html is the extension to the file here that lets us know what language we're working in. So maybe some of you are familiar with .docx for a word or .pdf. These describe the kind of computer language that the computer needs to uh, utilize to interpret that information correctly. So does that mean that like if you had named it something else, like let's say that this is where you were going to write all your HTML, but on that folder part you had written SS, MCSS instead, does that mean it mm -hmm. would work? Correct. Okay. And not, not the folder, but the file name itself. Sorry, I was getting those mixed up earlier too. Web browsers know how to process uh, HTML for websites. They also know how to process a few other files, but they won't necessarily take those other files and show them the way we want our user to see it. They'll just show you the information inside of the file. So, so it's important to use HTML because that's what all web browsers are expecting to see. Cool. Uh, is there anyone who hasn't gotten this far that would like to get this far? Okay. The next step with VS Code, VS Code is very handy and very kind to us. We type the letters HTML 
And VS Code, if we if we are slow about this, VS Code gives us these options, HTML, HTML5, and in mine, it also gives me the option of HTML, XML. And I wanna use my arrow key to go down to HTML5. It is important that you don't click anywhere else and you don't hit return too quickly. I wanna use HTML5 and from here, return or not, I guess now I click and HTML5 will load up something called boilerplate for the HTML5 with the most recent HTML language. So again, that process was HTML, I'm given some options and I can push down on my arrow key, return, and this boilerplate pops up. In preparation for this, I was wondering, I was like, where, is, where does boilerplate come from? And boilerplate came from uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a weird amalgamation, but old newspapers would get sent text that was already engraved into old used boilers uh, and they were rounded text. And so they were advertisements for companies and it, uh, the newspaper would have it inked and then just roll it on. And so it could be reused over and over and over again. And this is where we get the term boilerplate from. And this boilerplate is the most basic skeleton of our HTML document that we are going to create today. Does that mean that you shouldn't like, other than obviously the document title, but is it better to leave the rest of these things alone? Yeah, we'll actually get into what these mean here in a little bit. One of them is kind of silly. Okay, so I'll ask the question again. I'm gonna keep asking this question throughout the day. Please feel free to just raise a hand or just shoot an emoji reaction if you want, but is anybody not at the, this point that wants to be following along? Cool. I think this is a good stopping point for us to take a small break. We've been at it for an hour. Mika? I saw a raised hand for a sec. Uh, someone messaged on chat. You know, uh, someone where? just got in and wanted to be in the same spot as we are. Cool. Well, um, Austin, would you mind going over? Um, cool. Go, going over it with Gina. Um, and everyone, yeah. you're welcome to um, take a 10 minute break. Let's come back at 11.10. Uh, Feel free to turn off your camera if you want. Feel free to leave it on if you want. Best practice is to leave your mic muted, personally speaking. That way you're not in the other room being like, ah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> or your, my dog's not barking in the other room. We'll be back at 11.10. Hey there. So we have VS Code set up and all we've done is we've created a, a folder on our desktop. Okay. By right clicking and saying new folder. Um, let's see. I already did that. Right click, new folder. Yes. What are we naming this? 
build your first website. <laughs> okay. I didn't realize I was muted there for a second. Awesome. Cool. If your VS code has a purple banner at the bottom, it means it's not open into any project right now. That's perfect. Grab that new folder, drag and drop it into VS code. You should get a blue banner, maybe a pop up that says like, learn the fundamentals, welcome to VS code, that pop up, you can close yourself. There should be a tab at the top of an X. Hmm. Let me try this drag again. One second. Okay. That doesn't work from VS code. You can also open up the folder. Okay. Do you trust the authors of the files in this folder? Yes, I do. Awesome. So now I'm with the blue at the bottom. Cool. This button on the left hand side opens up our file tree unless it's already open. Okay. Once that file tree is open, there's a button that says new file. You can also right click to create a file. Cool. Once you create the file, we want to name it index.html. Mine's going to yell at me because I already have that. <laughs> Call it index two for a moment for me. Okay. And from here, we're going to type in the command HTML, which should bring up a prompt. Mm -hmm. We want to select HTML5, which will give us our boilerplate. Cool. Cool. You're caught up. Yes. Well. I'll see you <laughs> in eight minutes. All righty. Thank you. Thank Welcome. you, Tina. Thanks.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's like some people are still joining, joining us. <laughs> All right. Cool. So before we go any further, let's talk a little bit about why we're using VS Code. So technically, technically, we could use a program like Word, uh, Microsoft Word, to develop our website if we wanted to. Um, we would write out our HTML, we would have an HTML uh, extension on it, and we could load that up to the website. The reason we use VS Code is because it was developed by developers who want us to have easy access to tools specifically related to development. And so we have things like small built-in commands, like that HTML command that loads up the boilerplate for us in VS Code. And that just simply doesn't exist in other text editors like Word. So this is mainly the reason we're using VS Code today. There are other development text editors, Atom, um, and, and even ones that are built into some computer systems. VS Code just has this really nice ability uh, uh, for us here at Learn and for you in this, for us in this workshop, for us to be on the same page together, sometimes quite literally. Cool? Cool. So if we open up our build your first website, we should see inside of it a nested folder called index.html. Please take a moment to double check this to be, to be sure. So I'm opening up the folder and inside is index.html. Mine just says index with the Chrome um, thumbnail. Okay, um, let's append an extension to that. In code, uh, in VS Code, you can right click it and hit rename and make sure that it has the .html extension on there. You can write it in yourself. If this window here, this is called the file tree isn't showing, feel, just click on this top left hand icon in VS Code to open up the file tree. And it might look like this, and you will open up the folder, build your first website, right click the name, rename, and double check that it has the H .html extension. Mine also doesn't say .html on like in that build your first website folder but it does okay. say that the type of document is a Chrome HTML document. And in my VS code, it does say .html there. So do you think okay. that's just like a difference between maps Probably. and, okay. For now, we'll work under that assumption. If we need to circle back to this idea, we'll do that later. Uh, it might just be the, the way that you're viewing the file. I think you'd have to set an option to see the extension if you're talking about a Windows computer. Thank you. Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate group problem solving. It is so much nicer than trying to do it myself. If you ever want a really fun experiment to watch or research, look up um, group intelligence versus individual intelligence. There's this really cool point that people are, as a group, are not averagely intelligent. People as a group are significantly intelligent. 
uh, when they're actually cooperating together. Really cool stuff. So I'm gonna close this file tree for now so we can see the full page and we're gonna walk through what's going on in our boilerplate together. At the top, I have this HTML tag. Not technically an HTML tag, but it's similar. It starts with an opening angle bracket, which can be found where your comma is on your keyboard. And uh, we use shift comma to type this opening angle bracket. An exclamation mark, all caps doc type, HTML, and a closing angle bracket. The doc type HTML is something an HTML file needs in order to, uh, and is included to tell a web browser what kind of file this is. So a web browser isn't just looking at the extension, the web browser is looking at the first line of code and we're telling it, hey, this is gonna be an HTML file. And the web browser says, okay. Now, technically the latest web browsers don't need this, but it is part of a long series of web browsers that have. And so it's good practice to have it. So it works for a wide variety of programs. You might notice the greater and less than characters I was just talking about. These are called angle brackets and we're gonna be using them a lot today. They are essential to the syntax of HTML. Essential, they, these are going to be the wrappers of our HTML tags that are going to associate and style what we're doing, what our content is. The second line is, says HTML lang equals quote en quote and with the angle brackets surrounding it. You might be able to guess lang here means language, en here means English. This HTML tag right here is technically the opening tag to this closing tag here at the bottom. It's a little bit different, Mika, in that uh, these are more identifiers of the difference between content and instruction. Well, um, I don't know why, I, so I just associate Zoom thumbs up means thank you. <laughs> So I, I, whenever I say I'm saying thank you when I'm muted, I'm like, thank you. Uh, yeah, so this is a practice we're gonna see a lot today. An opening and a closing tag. So we have our angle bracket, HTML, angle bracket. And then at the bottom, we have angle bracket slash HTML, angle bracket. And everything inside of these HTML tags is actually nested like a Russian nesting doll inside of these HTML tags. And if you're not familiar with the Russian nesting doll, they're the dolls that are within dolls, within dolls, within dolls, within dolls that you pop open and there's a bunch of them in there. This L-A-N-G lang is an attribute that is appended to HTML with the equal sign, and then it's assigned the language of English. The beauty here is if I have a program that's a translator, 
the translator will look at what language this is and say, hey, I know how to translate English into this other thing. Let me do that for you real quick. So by declaring the language, we are assisting anybody who wants to read it also not in English. Any questions about the HTML tag? Yeah. I'm very sorry. Another question again. Um, is there a way that you can create like notes on your um, on your codes? So I'm trying to like make notes on the index.html. So in JavaScript, you have your like slashes to be able. Uh -huh. oh. There you go. I, I think you're doing it right yep. now. So. I can show okay. it to you right now. So the way okay, thank I, you. You're welcome. The way I did that, you can type this out if you want, but you can also just uh, hit on you hit command slash. Or sorry, yeah, command slash inside of your document and it will pop up this comment section for you. Anything you put in here will not be rendered by your HTML page. Now, there is a hiccup involved with this. Please be aware. This is on line two, and next to it, I have after it, I have line three. If I drop this line, anything in between these points will also not render. So please be aware of what you're doing and how you're doing it when you're commenting. If something's not showing up later, please let me, and I would like help, we can look back and see if something was commented out or something like that. There's gonna be a number of problem solving steps that we take. This is just one of them to keep in mind. And you can put comments anywhere, right? So like it doesn't necessarily be above the header, it could be in the body or whatever else. Correct. Okay. Do feel free to get creative with that if you like. The next tag that we have here is the head tag. The head tag for me right now opens on line four and closes on line nine. It has, again, angle bracket, head, angle bracket, and there on line nine, angle bracket, slash, head, angle bracket. Head, for the most part, is not displayed to our user. Nothing in the head here is something our user needs to interact with, save the title. The title is more for us to denote our project. We'll walk through what each of these do here in just a moment. First is our, one of our meta tags. VS Code has brought in this meta tag that has character set UTF-8. I'm pretty sure there's something like 600,000 characters in the character set UTF-8, including pretty much every language that's currently loaded up to, uh, to the internet as a character set. So as a developer, I can bring in any of those symbols that I want and the browser will know which character set to pull it from. Uh, 
Okay. This next meta tag. Yep. I had a quick question about the character set thing. Um, when you say like characters, you mean like letters and stuff or like, yep. okay, okay. Emojis, letters. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, even Chinese characters, more complex compound characters, um, little trademark symbols, everything. So does that mean that like if you if like English wasn't your first language or whatever, um, but you could write in like let's say Japanese, you could would mm -hmm. that be something that is included in that like being able to write the actual code in a different language? This is more about what's going to be displayed from what was given. Uh, so this meta tag is less about the code that was written and more about what's being shown to the user. And it's a good, it's a good, uh, it is a good candidate for a deep dive if you're feeling, if you're up late one night and you want to learn more about character sets. This next meta tag does one thing. It lets us show our, our uh, it lets us show our web page to Internet Explorer because Internet Explorer needs the help. Yep. <laughs> And then this meta tag viewport uh, with a name of viewport is dealing with how our information is displayed on different devices. So be it a mobile device, be it a computer, be it a TV screen, the different, uh, the different styles of display are going to be handled with this meta tag. Partly, there's more that we can do to help that out. Give me one second, I'm going to turn on my fan. And then lastly, we have our title tag. Our title tag has an opening tag of title and a closing tag of title. And inside is called the inner HTML or the content that I wanna show. And I'm going to change this word document by double clicking it so it highlights to my first website. Cool. Before we go any further, let's look at what this looks like in Chrome. We are making a website after all. I'll bring it back to full screen in just a minute. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the tab here and drag it over to Google Chrome and paste it. drop it rather. So again, that was grabbing the tab of index.html, dragging it over to Google Chrome, and, and dropping it on the tab at the top. And you can see my beautiful website and all its blankness. But because I updated the title, you can see the title at the very top.
What happens if you don't see the title? Are you using Google Chrome? Mm -hmm. And you updated the the doc inner HTML of the title tag? It just says at the top when I dragged and dropped it into into Google Chrome. Uh huh. Wait. Okay, I don't know. I did something different, I guess. <laughs> so disregard what I just. No worries. <laughs> I had this happen yesterday. I went to, I took my bike in to the shop. I was like, look, it's just, I'm having issues with it. And I know if you guys just look at it, it'll fix itself because it won't work for me. I think I saved it. I don't know. I, okay. I did yes. I oh, I was thanks. having that issue too. I had to save it. Um, cause I noticed that when I dragged it, uh, it wasn't saved. The, um, the code in the uh, editor wasn't saved yet. And it, didn't do anything really. And then I had to go back and save it. And, so yeah. this is, this is a developer error on my part. I have auto save turned on. And so I forgot that I need to remind you all to save your file whenever you make a change. And then you can update that change in your browser by pressing the refresh. Little, little things, you know, Okay, for now, I'm going to move this over to the side. So uh, I have it over here and I'm going to expand this view one more time. Cool. Everybody who wanted to was able to get their uh, page. You do not have to have autosave on. Uh, it's something I turned on about six to eight months ago and I just have never turned it off. Um, I would say for the sake of simplicity for now, we'll just remember to save and I will remember to mention saving. Is it shift S on PC or is it control S? Just control S. Control S. Sorry, I clearly don't have a PC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shift should be the different, the different capitalized uh, oh letters. God. Sorry guys. <laughs> control S on PC is a save as file, but we we should be set on that one. Again, thank you for the help, everybody. When you're saving or before you've saved, my little X up here will be a white dot for you on VS Code. And that's if your file is unsaved currently. So just a heads up, that's what you can look for. There should be a little white dot uh, where this X is currently. So if you make a change real quick, you'll see it. A quick question. So you're saying to save the file on the, before we transfer it over to uh, Chrome. Google Chrome, right? Yes, if you want to see the changes that you're making. And how do you save it? Because I feel like mine didn't save when I transfer the file, it just showed me like a, it didn't show the actual name of the web, my first website. It was no just worries. a link. No worries. Um, you're going to save by the file drop down menu or through the uh, key binding control S. I was having that problem and I noticed that I have a bunch of extensions up or plugins for Chrome and I had to turn off a bunch for it to work. So okay. that is a thing. Okay, thank you. It worked after taking the, uh, or turning off all the extensions. Yeah, we're gonna do this workflow in a few, uh, a good number of times today. So my URL will just be, actually it'll look kind of familiar. It looks like 
desktop and or build your first website, this is the local file path. And at the top up here is the, is the change that I've made in my, my first website. One more. Cool. I'm gonna leave that in the background. So that's the head and the title. Next up for the tags is the body. The body tag is going to maintain and hold all of the content we want our user to see. So this body tag is going to surround or wrap all of the content we want our user to see. In here, I can add something called an H1 tag and give it a value that inner HTML like we were looking at earlier to have it displayed in my user. And the way I do that is I type angle bracket where the comma is. So shift comma for the first angle bracket, H1 angle bracket. My VS code just populated my second tag for me. Please let me know if it doesn't populate it for you. And populate means it brought it up without my input. Once we have our H1 tags, just give me a thumbs up. Cool. Inside of the H1 tag, I can type my first website one more time. Maybe throw an exclamation mark on there. Maybe a little happy face. That's me. You don't have to do that. I'm going to save this file. I'm going to look at my web page and reload. Ashley. Do you mind if I troubleshoot with you for a minute? Okay, do you wanna unmute real quick? Yeah. Cool. So do you have Chrome? I'm gonna go through some basic questions real quick. Do you have Chrome open? Yes. Cool. Do you have the index with the .html extension? Mm-hmm. Can you put them side by side? Can you put the Google Chrome browser and the VS code kind of next to each other? Mm -hmm. On the Google Chrome, I would open up a new tab. Okay. Drag this guy over to the Google Chrome tab and drop. Okay. Did that work for you? 
Um, when I open it, there's still nothing there. Okay. Um, oh, is your is file the saved? title supposed to be on the actual tab? I apologize. Is this supposed yes. to come? Okay, I'm sorry. I was looking no for worries. a title in the actual web page. No worries. Yeah, we. Oh, that's okay. the thing we just did. Gotcha. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, the starting off with a blank website is always a little weird. Okay. Then we are good. Chilling. Thank you. You're welcome. And so, congratulations, you've made a website. You have content on a page. You could, you, I mean, with some extra steps, you could get this going and just send it off to your friends. You got a web page. We're gonna make it, we're gonna flush it out. We're not done here today, but we're gonna, you know, good job. All right, maybe I'm a little overly excited. So H1 stands for the first header. There's actually a bunch of H tags all the way down to H6. And they get smaller and smaller and smaller, even though the number gets bigger. So just to showcase right now, you don't have to do this along. You can have fun with it if you like. I am dropping lines by using the return or enter button. And I am adding a tag by using my angle bracket, letter H, a number, and another angle bracket. And it's populating the closing bracket for me. If it's not for you, you may want to type that out. It requires a slash. And inside of those tags, I'm putting words like here are some words. <laughs> and once I've saved my file, but with the drop down save function or the key binding, and I refresh my page, I can see the content that I've brought up on my web page. Can I ask a question? Yeah. So I know you said, you know, that like, okay, we have a web page now. Cool. So like if we, if, if I were to send that, what's in the, uh, the, the, the box. text box? Yeah. Like if I, if I were to send like copy and paste that to somebody, they would be able to see the same thing. Not yet. So this is the, this is why we have, uh, a high, uh, HTTP addresses or the www dot addresses. And that is currently you are personally hosting this file on your computer so that you can see it. But if you want someone else to see it, you would have to give them access to your computer since this is where it's hosted. And that can be dangerous. So we create servers. Servers hold this information and serve up this information to the people who want it. And that's what hosting a site is. So Wix, Squarespace, and other places don't just have their own program, but they have the fact that they host their sites as well. And that's how they're serving it up to people. So we would need to deploy this information to a hosting service uh, that would then serve up that link to people that you want it. But, you could send this file off to them, friends, family, and they could drag and drop it into Chrome and it would show up correctly as well. Okay, so the server is what allows a regular user so a person to be able to see it. Yes. But as of right now. This is the local are... file. Okay, okay. So it's only like, only I can see what I'm doing, only you can see what you're doing right now, other than the fact that you're sharing with us. Yeah. But if you wanted someone, if you wanted the general public to see it, you'd have to get it onto a server of some sort. Correct. And get like a domain and everything like that in order for other people to see it. Correct. Now, it. an option for that is to gain another computer of your own and just have it running all the time as a server. Servers are just computers, but it, its main purpose then would be to 
let people to be serving up that data to others. In Learn, we learn how, uh, at the Learn program, we learn how to run servers ourselves on our computers um, so that we can work with uh, full web pages and full stack applications. But that is a process. Cool. Who's feeling good so far? Who's ready to take this up a notch? Let's do it. There's another tag we want to explore. Same angle brackets, the letter P angle bracket, and that is called the paragraph tag or the P tag. P tag is going to be associated with those paragraphs that we saw earlier on our um, in our wireframe. Okay, that's not the right one. Do, 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 do. Sorry, one second. Let me just grab this. This is going to move around a bunch. Paragraph tag is going to be this element here. So moving around a little bit again. We uh, actually I don't know this to be certain. I don't I don't know if anyone's in high school or not, but we're not in high school and we're not going to be forced to write out a giant paragraph describing ourselves right now. We can use the internet to our benefit and grab in just some random text that is helpful for us to see what we're doing as developers. And in the development community, there's already this concept called lorem ipsum, which is fake Latin. And if I type out the words lorem in VS Code and I click it, it will give me Lorem ipsum dola sit amet contraceter abiditing elite. And this is just gibberish. It literally means nothing. And lorem ipsum is fun, but it's also everywhere. So personally, as kind of a Star Wars nerd, I went and found some. Um, Star Wars lore mipsum, which is also gibberish, but it's kind of fun. You can grab lorem of whatever you like. This is going to be placeholder text that you yourself as the developer and creator and creative director of your website, you can go in and fill in with actual personal information later if you like. But if I go to the file and save, and then I go to my website and I reload, I get my lorem. So altogether, that was a p tag with some lorem ipsum. I brought in using the, the, the uh, command lorem and it's all nested inside of this p tag. I saved the file and reloaded the page. If you want to be this far and you get this far, give me a thumbs up. Okay. You're starting to see it. We're starting to look a little bit like Wikipedia, huh? 
that P tag is kind of familiar. That font and everything's a little familiar. Maybe people don't spend as much time on Wikipedia as I do. There's funny lorem ipsum, there's Game of Thrones lorem ipsum, there's lots of lots of options here. But I'm not just gonna have one paragraph about myself. I'm gonna have, uh, let's go with three, just so I can introduce myself in some pretty good detail. So what I want to do is I want to highlight this whole P tag from the end tag of the, from the last angle bracket of the second P tag, all the way to the first angle bracket of the first P tag or the opposite, first to the last. And then I'm going to use the command copy or command C if you're on Mac, control C if you're on PC. I'm going to drop a new line and I'm going to use the command paste. Command V if you're on Mac, Control V if you're on PC. One more time, since I already have it copied, I don't need to, but just to showcase it again, I'm highlighting both P tags and the text. Command C or copy and new line, command V or edit paste. Control V if you're on PC. And now I should have three paragraphs that are roughly, the, that are all exactly the same. I just moved that over with the tab button, just to clarify, if you want to line things up. I'm a little fastidious about this. I'm going to go to the file, save, that's Chrome, code, file, save, or command slash control S, and go to my Chrome browser, reload, and see three paragraphs. I have a quick question. So when you put the lorem, is it supposed to like um, make new lines by itself? Because right now, when I do it, it's just one long line. Oh, this is a really good point. Thank you, Roberto. Um, earlier, when I was moving things around, I activated a setting that uh, brings all of this down, and that has changed what's going on here, and I didn't show that to you guys. Thank you, Roberto. In VS Code, there's, a there's an option called View, and there's a option for Word Wrap, which will bring all of it down for you. That's different, huh? Thank you. Yeah, thanks. The number of times I have activated word wrap for me, it's just like, you know, it's like getting in the car, turning on the things, turning on my tunes. The fun part about this and the beauty of this is, is that it doesn't change what shows up on our website though. It just makes it more difficult for us to work with as developers if we don't have that word wrap turned on sometimes. But who has all three paragraphs and their title shown up on their page? Can I get a thumbs up? All right. Is anybody not at this point that wants to be at this point? I'm just finishing up. I'm just doing cool. it real quick. 
we'll just take a minute then. I'm having a little trouble pasting, copying and pasting on my PC. Yeah. The um, P tag. Okay. Um, I recommend using, uh, when you highlight, mm -hmm. using the file drop down, the edit drop down, okay. copy and paste. Yeah, I'm actually on a Mac using a PC keyboard because I like my mechanical keyboard. And so for me, the Windows button is my command button, but the control button doesn't work because it's a Mac, not a PC. It's weird. So if you're in my if you're in my category, you got to use the window button. And if you're using a PC and a Mac keyboard, I don't know how to help you. It's supposed to be a funny joke. Uh, that's why I have a career in development and not in comedy. Uh, cool. Anybody else want help with these smaller steps? All right, well, we've got some stuff on the page. We are chugging along and it's noon. And I know the time flies. So I don't know how hungry you all are, but I am a little hungry. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Nancy. Yes, you guys, um, let's uh, take a break for 30 minutes, um, grab some food, go for a walk, um, and we will reconvene at 12.30 Pacific Standard Time or 3.30 if you're on the East Coast. <laughs> Feel free to um, turn off your screens if you'd like. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll be back here at uh, 12.30. Nancy, can you hit the pause record button? Not yeah. the stop record, just the pause record. You got it. So where we left off, we have a website with or a local HTML file with a heading and three paragraphs. And it looks kind of boring if we're being honest. But th this is just some of the basic elements that we brought in. We have our head tag here. This pled. We have our body tag here. Get rid of this just in case I run into an issue. We have our heading tag H1 and our paragraph tag P. All of it is wrapped by the body and the HTML tag at the at the bottom. So again, kind of boring. Let's spice it up. This is where CSS is going to come into play. And like how we made our HTML file, we are going to make a CSS file. On the left-hand side of the VS Code, on the top, there is a file tree explorer. I'm going to open that up. This opens up the directory that I'm working in. I'm going to press the new file button. And type into the text field styles.css. In VS Code, trying to adjust for what kind of file we're working with will give me the pound symbol. 
slash hashtag symbol slash octothorpe, depending on how computer science-y nerd you are. And then from there, press return. So again, that was opening up the file tree, pressing the new file button, typing in styles.css, and pressing return. Once you get there, yeah, give me a thumbs up. Cool, we're all moving along. We're gonna neglect the CSS file just for a moment while we link it into our HTML. So we're gonna pop back over to our HTML file. And back in that head, we had all these special tags. We're gonna add one ourselves. So this might look a little different for you, um, depending on the sizing of your VS code. But between the third or the last meta tag, whichever one you have, and before the title tag, make a new line. And on that new line, we're going to make a new tag called link. That's the opening bracket, the word link, and the closing bracket. This tag doesn't do anything as of yet. We need to give it some values to work with. And you'll notice it doesn't have a closing tag. This is a self-closing HTML tag. So after link, I'm gonna press space and I'm gonna give it a new value called an attribute that says rel, R-E-L, this is a reference to the word relative. Rel equals double quote. VS Code populated both of my quotes for me, so I don't need to hit it twice. Style sheet. Link space rel equals double quote style sheet. Should I make this bigger? I have a question. Yeah. Does it matter that like when I typed in link, it did auto populate some stuff? Like does that? Perfect. Okay. Does as long as the well equals style sheet, we're chilling. Okay, got it, thank you. I think it would have auto populated for me too. Let me give that a try. Yeah. So I'm just going to take this one step at a time though. So far we have link relative or rel equals double quote style sheet. All good? Chillin'. This lets HTML know, hey, I'm passing you something to augment how you look like. I'm passing you a sheet of styles. And it's coming from this place is the next thing we need to do. So we're gonna tell it, I need you to hypertext reference a location for me, href. From here, double quotes. And already you can tell VS Code is trying to help us out. Because VS Code is saying, hey, I know what project we're in, and I know this href is going to link to something else inside of this project. Do you want these two files? And we can see that these files are associated in our file tree inside of our project. 
So it's just another one of those gimmies and gifts that the developers of VS Code are handing off to us to make our lives a little bit easier. But I'm gonna type it in. My href is gonna link to styles.css. And styles.css will also be in double quotes. So altogether, this is a link tag that links rel equals stylesheet, href equals styles.css. Hey, HTML project, I need you to pull the styles from this location. All good? Anybody wanna hang out here for a second? Cool. Let's go add something to our CSS so that we can see some changes here. So I'm gonna save this file. I'm gonna close my file tree and head over to the CSS. So even though we just linked to the CSS page and it is a style page and we saved, if I reload this, nothing's changed. We haven't changed any values. So in our CSS file, we are going to use something called a tag selector. Now, there are three main ways to use tag selectors. The first one is to call upon the tags that already exist in HTML. HTML has these tags, body, h1, and p that we are already using. We can call on those. Namely, we want to call on the h1. From our H1, we are going to add curly brackets, which is next to the P underneath the plus and minus sign on your keyboard, and you have to use the shift button to add them. And from there, I'm going to press return. And now I am editing the properties of the H1 tag. I can do a lot of stuff from here. Like I can change the color of the H1 tag. If I type the word color followed by a colon, I can choose any of these colors and many more, a lot of colors here. Anybody have any uh, suggestions for a color here? Purple. Purple? Medium purple, dark violet. It's Batman's purple. And after dark violet, I want a semicolon. From here, I'm going to save this file. I'm going to go over to my web page and reload. And my first website is now dark violet. Kind of cool, huh? There's more than colors to CSS. CSS even has fonts. And I could say, I could choose a whole font family. The way I just did this, by the way, I wanna just showcase this. Hang on, I'm gonna come down to my keyboard here. Okay, I don't know if this is far enough. This is not gonna work, that's not gonna work. All right, I have a, I have a better plan here, I have a better plan. actually something I wanted to use and I forgot about until this very moment. Nope. 
Nope. Okay, I'm struggling. Let's uh, reset for a second. So if I type the word font, this entire list of options pops up for me. And one of them is called font style. I just click font style or I use my arrow keys to navigate to it and hit return. It will give me a second set of options. Italic, normal, oblique, inherit, initial, unset. Let's hit, I'm gonna hit italic. And then from here, I'm gonna type font and go down with my down arrow key to font size. Hit return. And while there's a bunch of options here, I'm going to input 24 PX, which stands for 24 pixels. So this is all inside of my H1, inside of the curly braces. Each line is a new attribute separated by semicolons. When I save this file and I reload my page, I will get the update change to my website. I yes. Um, this is not a, like a right now question, but just in general, like if you were the type of person who could like, like if you wanted a custom type of font, you know, like how you can sometimes buy or make one, would this be the place, like, is there a way to input it into, or, or does like the font itself have its own type of code that you would then put in here? Both. Okay. <laughs> you can do either way. One of them is to bring a link into your HTML the same way we did the style sheet, and then to call on the names that that link provided. If you go to Google Fonts and you spend some time looking around at Google Fonts, it'll have instructions for you on how to do that. Okay, anybody else having trouble getting to this point? You do not have to use dark violet. You can use whatever you like. dark gray, dark, dark violet. Ooh, dark slate gray. That's very like Star Wars color-y. Cool. For the next tag then, we are gonna drop a line after the curly brace. And we're gonna call on that P tag that we are using in our HTML file. The P tag also gets curly braces. I'm going to tab over just for my own sake of keeping things straight. And I'm gonna bring in the value of padding. So that was P, curly brace, new line, padding. And padding, I'm going to pass 20 pixels. When I save this and I go to my site and refresh it, I now have distance between my paragraphs 
depending on what I passed in as the padding. I have a question. Yeah. Um, so I noticed a couple of things. One, you know, that it did all the paragraphs, but yep. then also the fact that like, it wasn't just the space in between the paragraphs, it was also the space on the side. Yep. So is there a way to like, either, well, one, customize a specific paragraph, and then two, let's say you wanted padding on the sides, but you didn't want any more padding in between. How's yes, <laughs> yes, yes, totally. There are ways to do that. So maybe padding all over is 20 pixels, but padding left or padding right, I want to be an extra 40 pixels. There are so many options here. There are different forms of what, for right now, we're gonna call padding. There's margin, there's padding, there's, actually, let me just double check this real quick. I'm going to open up a series of tools in my Chrome, which is why we have you guys download Chrome. Margin, border, and padding, and then the actual document. You can see I've defined the padding as 40, 40, 20, and 20 right here. The way I accessed this was by right clicking my web page, going to inspect, looking at the elements tab. There's elements in console. If you use JavaScript, you're probably familiar with console. And then there are two sections in here. There's the HTML section on top and there's the style section on bottom. You have to drag up. And then inside of here, you'll get this cool little helper. And if you ever wanna select something, you use the little selector button. That's getting out of hand from what we are doing today. But after today, feel free to go and look at this and help use it as a helper to figuring out what you like to do. I'm gonna go back just to the 20 pixel padding. Say that five times fast. So the common workflow here is as we add tags to our HTML, we can target them in our CSS by calling on the name of the tag. Another way of targeting a tag that Shannon pointed out is when we targeted the P tag, it addressed all of the paragraph tags. But say we want one paragraph to be different than the others. Well, then we pass it the attribute of class. And we set class to equal something like first paragraph, maybe just first P make life easier, not typing extra letters out. Or if that's, if you want to keep track of it better. First dash paragraph. This is up to you as the developer, what to name it. Name it whatever will help you keep track of what you're doing. From here, I'm going to copy just the word first paragraph, first dash paragraph. I'm going to go to styles.css, 
I'm going to paste on a new line, first paragraph, and I'm going to give it a period. And the curly bra uh, brackets that we've seen so far. So that workflow was adding an attribute to the tag. Notice these are inside of the brackets. The attribute's name is class. I'm setting it to equal a word that's hyphenated if it's two words, no spaces. Inside of double quotes. And then in the style CSS, I'm saying dot that exact name, but no quotes this time with curly braces. And I'll add something like Crimson, just to see some changes real quick. I'm going to go and save this file. Go back to my website, reload, and now I have red text. So I know it's connected properly. I know it's working. I can start making stylistic changes as I desire. Shannon, just to uh, point out something uh, that you were talking about with that, uh, that I ended up showing as the right click inspect showing the styles. I wanted to share this with you guys. This is called the box model. Uh, let me grab the link actually, copy link. When you're styling in CSS, this is what we were looking at in our, in our tools there a second ago, but this is what you want to keep in mind and how things are going to look and operate and how they work out together. So there isn't just, uh, there's border, margin, and padding are the three things that move things around, the three spacing that move things around in your web page. Cool. So we have one, uh, one paragraph that is red. We have these two paragraphs here that are a little different, or that are normal, let's call them. They're different from our main one. Let's put these together inside of another tag so we can work with these two paragraphs on their own. So I have my first paragraph here. I want to leave this one alone. I want to set a new line between these two paragraph tags. This is my the end of my first paragraph and the start of my next paragraph. And I'm going to add the tag section. And this part is a little tricky but I believe in all of you. I'm going to highlight the second tag of section. I'm going to cut it out so that it is now held on my clipboard, my ability to paste, but it isn't online. It isn't on that line anymore between those two tags. I'm gonna scroll down past the P tag the end P tag of my second paragraph, or actually my third paragraph in this case, and I'm going to paste. So if I zoom out a little bit, we can see that this section now wraps 
around these two paragraph tags. Now, indentation is not necessary for our computers. Computers don't care about the indentation in HTML, but for us as developers, developing readable code, it is a good practice. And by good, I mean necessary. So I'm gonna highlight my P tags, and hit the tab button to move it over so that I know all of this at a glance is inside of my section tag. We moved through a bunch of steps, flowed through it pretty quickly. Is anybody trying to catch up right now? Does anybody like help with anything? Yes, my, um, when I went back to change the color for my paragraphs, it didn't um, in styles and CSS. Uh -huh. um, I need to see maybe. Here, let me make this bigger. Huh. So for the paragraph or for the or for your class? Uh, maybe I didn't do the class right. Everything looks exactly the way it looks on your screen, and I did, but cool. it, when I refreshed it, it didn't. We have the class on the P tag in the HTML side. Uh, with the same exact spelling as it is in your styles. This paragraph dash. Oh, I see what I did. The amount of times I have done a typo and I'm like, why isn't this working? It's is... the brackets. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Missing on first paragraph. Let's let's try it now and see. Oh no, that didn't work either. Okay, hold on a second. Remember to save. Okay. First paragraph. Can you also go to line nine? I think I have something going on about like uh, the communication for uh, CSS and HTML. Okay. Correct for mine. Yeah, that one's gonna uh, be the link. There is a closing one. Okay, yeah. hold on. Yeah. Oh, yes. Right. Oh, I did not mention that. That link has a slash caret at the, a slash angle bracket at the end. I'm still not showing any of the uh, CSS. It's still not okay. communicating on my Google Chrome. Yeah, okay. what it is. The slash caret is the same. So let's do some of the basic troubleshooting. Are both files in the same folder? Yes. Okay. So when I open up my folder, I see both of them are in here. Uh, yep, I do see that. Cool. That's part one. <laughs> part two, the link calls rel style sheet in double quotes and the href styles.css in double quotes. I'm just gonna take a picture just in case. No, well, actually, <laughs> so if, if you uh, would, if you don't mind sharing your screen, we can do that. Sure. Let's see. It can be frustrating to try to convince people that, like, no, like I typed the thing out right. It's just not working. <laughs> and that that does happen. For being really, really fair. Cool. Okay. So. Look good. Styles, styles, styles.css, styles.css. Looks great. Let's go to styles.css. Okay. Let's go to the top. H1, perfect. P tag, perfect. First paragraph, perfect. Why isn't this working? I don't know. Uh, I don't see a semicolon. I think it's or, the part. Because uh, it's a it's should be font. Styles are blue, oh. should be fine. It doesn't have a second a semicolon at the end. At, which one? Uh, I'm sorry. On, Eleven. On Badger blue on line ten. Yeah. Line ten. Uh, it wasn't working before then, though. Let's okay. see. Cool. There. You go. Thank you. Cool. Let's go to index.html one more time. Okay. Let's 
Is it okay to have a space in between here? Uh huh. It's oh, perfect. Yeah. That Got it. Okay. Give me one second to just look around. Okay. Can you show me the Chrome tab where this is running? Um, just going to share. Let's see. And can you reload this page for us? All right. Weird. <laughs> I thought it was just me. Uh, weird. Yay, okay. special. Can you show the folder real quick that this is all housed in? You got it. I want to know why it's being weird. Hold on one sec. Stop sharing. Let's just share screen. Oh, this is in BYFW. What? You, what? Hmm. No, that should work. BYFW styles at CSS. Can you open up that Chrome tab one more time? Yeah. Okay. I think. Do you have two folders for this project right now? Uh, no, only one. Okay. Because VS Code is saying the folder's name is BYFW, but this directory is saying build your own web page. Let's see. Let me cancel this one and go back in and see if I can copy and paste it again. Um, yeah, let's do, let's drag and drop the, why don't you drag and drop the uh, BYFW.HTML into Chrome real quick. No dice? No dice. Weird. OK. I'm cool to just go along if I'm doing everything correctly. I'm cool to just watch. Might be a, <laughs> that might be a troubleshoot we come around we come back around to in a bit is anybody else having okay. that same problem the only thing i can think of is if you go into because i had problems with extensions earlier if you go into extensions and then go into developer mode that might help because that Tanya noticed something about ashley's too can you open can you share your screen one more time and then okay. ross can you walk us through that developer yeah, so in the one sec. I'm going to troubleshoot one thing, Ross, and then we're going to come back to you. Okay. Um, Ashley, can you show the code one more time? Sure. This says index.html. Oh, this is me I'm looking at, not you. That's so weird. Why did I do that to myself? Okay, index.html. Yes, you do need that slash there. Okay. Yeah. That's weird. Cool. Ross, can you walk us through what you were saying? Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's going to work, but just a shot in the dark. In the top right corner of Chrome, just underneath the uh, X, there's the three dots. If you go down to more tools and then extensions, and then you'll see in the page of extensions on the top right, there's a little button slash switch for developer mode and turn that on. Nice. And, and then <clears throat> go back to my first website and reload it. Not a. Okay. Weird. Thank you, though. I'm so sorry that that's not working. It's all good. I'm down for keeping on track if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and we can always we can always troubleshoot this right after. Okay, who else would like troubleshooting? I would. 
Cool, Gina. Would you mind sharing your screen or do you want to talk through it? Um, I'm going to have to talk through it because I'm on my phone because I couldn't get in the Zoom on my laptop. So. Got it. Um, so I don't have the color. The class um, equals uh, first paragraph is actually showing up on my web page now. Interesting. Right before, right before the lorem. So uh, your paragraph tag is surrounded by two angle brackets. And you want to move class equals first paragraph inside of the angle bracket so that they're wrapped around all of that information. Yeah. I can show that real quick. So okay, yeah, the lorem right. ipsum is right here. And here is my open angle bracket, p tag, class equals first paragraph, and double quotes, closing angle bracket. Okay. That's a good problem to have because if you see it on your web page, then it is not part of the tag. Let's see if that exits it. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> Great. That's a good Thank problem you. to have because that one has like a very clear indication of what to do next. Gotcha. Um, okay, anybody else? Mika? Nope. Cool. All right. Well, uh, connection and communication issues notwithstanding, we'll keep moving on then. So let's revisit that wireframe that we were looking at. I'm going to open this up real quick. So our web page, if I do this and I bring this over, I'm going to jump a couple of screens real quick, everybody. I apologize. Nope. A quick question while we're doing this. Um, yeah. For the link rel, does it need to specifically be style sheet? Styles sheet, I believe. Okay, because I, I noticed, Ashley, that you said style sheets. Um, I don't oh. know if I'm try changing that and see if it fixes it. So the plural is on the styles, the singular is on the sheets. Rebecca, paying attention to the details. Also, I don't think, like, my PC didn't automatically do the forward slash closing okay. cat. Just, I don't know, it still works, so. Cool, yeah, <laughs> technically it shouldn't need that. Shannon, you were saying? Sorry, sorry, I was gonna say, I have the same thing. That's why I was asking if that was a reason why, because I know that like little details matter, but I think it's because I did the link like drop down versus you typing it in. Maybe that's why I didn't show that. Yeah, I think so too. This is one of the things that I, I actually enjoy telling students because it's kind of silly. Computers are like your super literal, really dumb friend. Computers cannot understand what you mean when you say something that should just be a colloquialism, like, you know, like a style sheets, whatever, man. Like computers really only can deal with exact detail. And so that's why a lot of our experience as developers is bug fixing, if you will. We can say bug fixing, but really it is just a communication issue. It's that computers are really specific, like crazy specific, and they do not deal well with anything outside of their hyper-specific understanding. And so we as developers have to learn how to communicate on their level. They have never learned how to communicate on ours because they're not good friends to us. Also, computers are just rocks that we taught to we taught to think by putting lightning in them. One thing. Okay, so we can see my HTML, my HTML here. We can see my CSS here. It's, I mean, it's cool, but it's not like the, the coolest, and it's not what our wireframe is worked out to be. 
our wireframe has this really big box up top with this like cool, uh, with a, a font that's kind of like fun and friendly. So we want to bring that in. The header, this is the header portion. Right now our header portion is literally just some words that says my first website. So headers have a history of being a really important part of websites because the first thing you see as a user, like as soon as you log into a website, it's like, it's right there in your face. And some, um, and Twitter did a bunch of research on what is the best thing for users to see as soon as they log in. And they came up with this idea called a Jumbotron. And it's part of their library called Bootstrap. Bootstrap is um, a library of styles brought to us by Twitter. And we are going to use it to uh, bring in this thing called a Jumbotron. But it has been 45 minutes since lunch. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take a one last small break before we wrap up here. And we are going to finish up with the Jumbotron. And then the last thing we're going to do is bring in these nice cards when we're back from a break. How does a five minute break sound? Cool. Let's come back at 120. See you guys in five minutes. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. That was a really fast five minutes. I literally just looked back at the clock and was like, geez. <laughs> um, welcome back. I sent the link in the chat to um, uh, the Bootstrap page for everyone. I'm going to send a different link because that Bootstrap page is good, but there's a stabilized version of Bootstrap that we want in specifically. All right. Thanks, Austin. Awesome. Didn't tell Nancy ahead of time, so it's not her fault. <laughs> that one is the one we want to go to. Okay, Bootstrap, uh, open source styling available to us by Twitter to use. We are going to bring three links into our project. Their placement is very important. Uh, and we do not want to adjust the links whatsoever. So the first one is the CSS link. We're going to press this little button, copy. Copied. Thank you, Twitter. And I'm going to go back. Actually, this I'm going to read this real quick. Copy and paste the style sheet link into your head before all other style sheets to load our CSS. Cool. So I go back in here, I have my link for a style sheet, and it's right after a meta tag. Austin, so would you mind sharing your screen, please? Yep. Yep. That would be helpful. One more time. On this bootstrap page, so this is it says introduction, quick start, CSS. I have copy paste the style sheet link into your head for all other style sheets to load our CSS. And right here is a button that says copy. Gives me a little copied. And it is this long href link plus integrity and cross origin, some other stuff. I'm going to take this and bring it back into my HTML page. I have my style sheet link here that I created. I'm actually going to drop this down a line and insert what we just copied over by pasting it. It should be kind of big. Toss me that thumbs up emoji or a regular thumbs up when you're good. So 
if you're still working on it, we're going to go back. To, we're on this page that was linked in the chat in this under the CSS header. We're going to press that copy button. We're going to go to our HTML and, and we're going to drop a new line before the style sheet we made, we're going to insert what we copied. So if you are exactly matched up to me, it'll be line nine is the new style sheet and line 10 is the style sheet we all made together a minute ago. Anybody still struggling with this one? Cool. From there, we are gonna go grab these two tags underneath bundle. We're going to copy this to our clipboard. Copied. Go back to our HTML page. Oh, why are you throwing me an error? Breakpoint. OK. I'll come back to you in a minute. And I just get that error. And this is a very important part here. Well, I'll address that error in a second. At the end of my page, I have my HTML tag, my body tag, and my section tag. The last thing before my body tag is going to be what we just copied. So I'm going to edit and paste. It's going to be a little wonky in formatting, so I'm going to bring that over. There are two large, intense tags that we just brought in. Both of them are script tags with long HTML, HTTPS links, HTML links. What is it that these uh, three links allow us to do? They are giving us access to a library of styling that has already been developed by other developers for us. So if we didn't have those tags, we're only limited to what is available we create. in this or? Well, whatever we create. Okay. You can think of this like a Lego set. Yes, you could get some hot glue together and make every individual piece of Lego that you want customized made um, on top of maybe a basic Lego set, or you can go buy or borrow a Lego set from a friend. And so this is like saying, your friend saying, hey, I already put together a bunch of Lego sets. Here, you can use them whenever you want. Cool. Well, that won't show anything differently on our web page. But if we've done it correctly, we'll have we will have a new link, both of which are styles sheet and our old link, new link and our old link. Cool. From here, we're going to go to components on the left-hand side of the Bootstrap page. And on the components, it's gonna create a dropdown with alerts, badge, breadcrumb, buttons, button group, card, carousel, collapse, dropdowns, forms, input group, and Jumbotron. I'm gonna go to Jumbotron. Just in case you want to cheat, I just link to Jumbo Talk. Cool. And the Jumbotron is that we can copy looks exactly like this. Hello world. This is a 
simple hero unit, a simple Jumbotron style component for calling extra attention to featured content or information. Hello world, this is a simple hero unit, a simple Jumbotron style component for calling extra attention to a featured content or information. Oh wait, that looks similar. Oh wait, this is all of the HTML linked to CSS classes to make this Jumbotron. When I want though, is this one down here called Fluid Jumbotron. So copy. I'm gonna go back over to my HTML, scroll down to my heading tag. Very sadly, delete. Oh no, so sad. But then, paste. And I brought in all of this information. So, that all together was navigating to the com to the components jumbotron inside of the bootstrap web page copying the code for the fluid jumbotron copied going to index.html deleting my h1 tag and pasting in its place all of this code And then from here, I can augment the inner HTML, just like we did in the very beginning of that Jumbotron. I have a question. Yes. Is container, like I noticed that that box is gray. So if we wanted to change that to like a different color, would we put container? Cause that's the class that's, container is that box, right? That gray box. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can actually adjust that here in a minute if you like, but let's, let's just look at what this looks like for a minute. Uh, I'm going to drag and drop my index HTML. Now I have the Jumbotron showing up on my website. Okay, for this next part, you're gonna need this link that I'm sending you, but don't go to this link. It's a really, it's a really nice surprise. No, wait, too, too, too little. Okay. There's a link in the chat for you to copy. If you go to it, you'll ruin the surprise. It's, it's adorable, but you'll ruin the surprise. What we're gonna go do is on the Jumbotron, where it says Jumbotron Fluid, we're actually gonna get rid of the name Jumbotron Fluid. We're going to add after a space after the Jumbotron, we're going to add my background 
image. Now this is very particular because this class equals jumbotron space my dash background dash image. And the way this is working is that each of these words are their own classes, but we're using these classes together by putting that space in there. Cool. Nothing should display. Maybe a couple things will change from the Jumbotron when we do this. Okay, nothing should really change. We're gonna go to our CSS page and we're gonna type in dot my background image. And I'm just gonna double check my background image my background image, cool, curly braces, new line. And a very special tag, background image. If I just type the word back, this list will pop up for me can use my arrows to navigate to background image. Press return. And then I'm going to go to the chat here in Zoom. So, I just opened it. And I'm going to copy the chat of the images.unsplash.com slash photo. And I'm going to put in here URL parenthesis, and then I'm going to paste, I'm going to paste that URL, word wrapping for my own sanity. So all together, we added my background image into our class. We went to CSS, we called on it by using dot my background image curly brace, called on the background image tag, passed it the URL value with parentheses, and in the parentheses, we gave it the URL that is in the, the chat from Zoom. I'm going to save this file. I'm going to go to my web page. And reload my web page. Oh no, it's so big. <laughs> okay, we need we need a couple more pieces. If we type the word back again, we get background size cover back one more time. Background position. And we're going to say center. Background size cover, background position center. I will send that in the chat as well. If somebody wants to just use that. And then a helpful piece here is the height 400 pixels. We'll, we'll hover on this for a minute, guys. I just want to show this to you now that it works. We have puppies. Let me know when you get puppies. Okay, this will work with any 
image from the internet. You can go, and I recommend going to, to unsplash.com if you want later, not right now, we've got, we got some more moves to make here in the next 30 minutes, 20 minutes. But any image from the internet, you can go and put into this URL with the parentheses and it will populate as the background image for, uh, for this. You might need to choose images that will get the right spot in the image, but this puppy one is perfect. Unsplash is really cool. We don't have to pay them. We don't have to credit the, uh, the artist there, and that's why people upload there. But you can uh, hire an artist from there. Nico, would you like help or would you like us to just hang out? I can also show you the index HTML. Actually, I can do both. So I will go down to the puppies. So this is what I have right here. And this is what I have right here. Now this is dependent on those three links that we brought in earlier, specifically the one link tag and the two script tags and their positions in everything. Mika, is, did the Jumbotron show up for you? Cool. Did the, were you able to delete the Jumbotron fluid and bring in the my background image after a space? Yes. Cool. And you got the my background image in your CSS? Yes. Cool. And background image has the URL plus the parentheses? Yes. And you brought the full URL link that was pasted in there? Yes. All right. Make sure there's no space between URL and the parentheses because I, I noticed that I accidentally put a space um, after URL before the parentheses and it wouldn't work. It did not. So I wonder. Do you mind me sharing my screen? Not at all. Uh, let me stop sharing. Okay. Let's take a look. Mob programming is super useful for these sorts of situations. Okay. Nice, my favorite learning learning passages. I love it. So I have my style CSS on the left hand side, mm -hmm. and I copied yeah. exactly what was um, inputted in the chat. Cool. Let's go to and index.html and save the file real quick. Done. And reload the page. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think I think I was saving in style CSS. So yeah. I'm, okay. Um, I wasn't sure if it made any difference. The number of times this is something I want to point out. Yes, today we we some of us have made mistakes about saving. The number of times you will make mistakes while say about saving while you're a developer okay. is daily. Like okay. that never stops. It happens to everyone. There is no shame in it. I understand. Thank you very much, everybody. Also, I love the idea of a Lord of the Rings page. Thank you. My wife would be ecstatic. Uh, cool. Let's share my screen one more time. So we've got our Jumbotron. We got some puppies. I got some text. It's kind of hard to see. Um, I'm going to bring this back over here. For the H1 and for the P class, we want to add something call, uh, called white drop shadow. And I'm going to link all of this for you guys so you can quickly incorporate it into your work. Now that's in the chat. And we're gonna paste that into our style sheet.
And along with first paragraph, one second actually. Along with lead, we're going to say white drop shadow. I'm going to copy this. And after this four, I'm going to also say white drop shadow. So I brought in this code from the Zoom chat, white drop shadow. And I have incorporated it with spaces by using spaces into the classes of my H1 and my P inside of my Jumbotron. Okay, so what this looks like is this. A little bit more visible text in front of the puppies. But my H1 earlier was a certain color that I was using. It was that dark slate gray. And I'm not really using this anymore. So I can go and delete this H1. And this has taken precedence. If you were to just leave it, would it would it mess anything up? No, um, it is good practice as developers to get rid of elements that we're not using and we're not calling upon. Uh, um, that has a lot to do with like more advanced project work down the line, but uh, it should not mess anything up unless we're going to call on H one somewhere else. So that what we call that is scaffolding. It's kind of like why you don't leave scaffolding up around a building once the building is built. Technically, it's not actually not getting in the way of anything, but also technically it served its purpose. But if you wanted to change the, the color, instead of mm -hmm. using one, you would use display four? Uh, for that exact one, we could use display four. Uh, we also... Say again? Yeah, just the title, not like yeah. other stuff. Okay. Yeah, exactly. We could totally do that. Cool. We have, let's look back at our, um, our the image, copy link address. Oh, that's not that's not the size I want. I'll bring this over. Our wireframe. So we have our jumbotron that we wanted. We have two of our paragraphs. We actually have three paragraphs, and we want to bring in this these things called cards. So in the next ten minutes, we're going to bring in cards. We'll and then we'll wrap up with our footer. Sound good? Okay. You guys have been flowing with me really well through this course, so we're going to kind of flow through this next part in the next 10 minutes together. Cool? Cool. So I'm going to go to back to Bootstrap using the link that was in chat. This was the Jumbotron, and now I want the card. That link is now in chat. 
This card right here has an image, card title, and some text, but also has a link to go somewhere. I don't really need that right now. I need more something like this is perfect. Just an image and some quick example text to build out the card and make up the bulk of the card's content. Awesome. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to minimize this web page. I'm going to go back to HTML. I'm going to go check out one of my paragraphs here. And you know what? Honestly, this third paragraph isn't quite serving the purpose that I want. I'm going to honestly nix that one. And I'm going to bring in this card by pasting it from the copying it earlier. If I refresh my page, I have a card here with a broken link, but some quick example text. So let's go find a cool image. I'll paste this cool image in the chat. And for the SRC, it has dot, 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 and the alt tag is dot, dot, dot. The SRC, I'm going to copy that link I just put in chat, and I'm going to paste instead of the dot, dot, dot for the image SRC. Can anyone guess what SRC stands for? Source. Good job. Image source. Refresh the page. Ooh, Tesseract from uh, uh, that one movie with what's his face, Matthew McConaughey, Interstellar. You know, that one movie. I'm going to copy this, drop a new line. Paste it, drop a new line, paste it, reload my page. And now I've got three cards on top of each other. But if I remember my wireframe, my cards weren't on top of each other, they were next to each other. So I'm gonna have to do something to change that. So earlier we had a section wrapping our paragraphs. I'm actually going to separate that out here. I'm going to cut that section, paste it back with my paragraph tag, and then I'm going to make a new section. I've created a wrapper. I'm going to make this small so you can see it. That wraps all three cards in their own section. And just like we did earlier, I'm going to add a class. And that class is going to equal my cards container. Container, container, yep. And I bet you can get us what we're going to do next. We'll copy my cards container. Go to styles.css, paste my cards container, add a, not there, Add a dot, some curly braces, I have a quick question. Yes. Uh, so I copied and pasted the card, but the first card came out looking normal. The other two looked really, really big. OK. Um. 
Let's deal with that in just a second. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. I just placed the styling in chat for my cards container and I copied it into my style sheet and it brought all of my cards together. Shannon, what you might want to look at is whether or not they were pasted after each other or if they were nested inside of each other. Oh, so, okay. That might just be an issue. Well, I'll, I'll have to look at it a little bit more. Okay, that's fine. Could you go back to the other screen? Mm -hmm. I'm also going to pass some more information into uh, chat here. This is for mobile development. We're going to add this in after my cards container. I would love to spend time explaining this, but we don't quite have the time to explain this. Other than that, this is going to make it more mobile responsive. And the way we bring in that real mobile response. Nope, that should be fine. That should be totally perfect. Yeah, awesome. You'll notice that as I move my screen around, the cards are also moving. And that's what we just brought in there with that extra command in the in the chat. And then last but not least, we need your signature. So after section at the very bottom, we're going to bring in footer. and your sign-off name. With that, in three minutes to spare, you got a website. I see some very focused faces. So let's do some time of troubleshooting. And then once we get people up to speed, we will celebrate together. What are each of y'all still working on? I uh, had to add the image source. 
we went through that kind of quick and I just had to go back and put it in. No worries. We did go through that very quick. Yeah. The cards from Bootstrap have the image source equals quote dot dot dot. You're putting the URL in place of the dot dot dot, but keeping the quotes. So the only thing that didn't work for me is the, the size of the cards. <laughs> Let's do it. Why don't you share your screen real quick? Okay. Sorry, I have like multiple screens, forgive me. I have three going right now. I also have three. Okay. Uh, okay. Yep, yeah. I see it. Cool. So uh, the I, issue I, I, is the online. This, though, I just want to say that like I was doing additional stuff while you were talking. So like I added like additional headers just to play around with it. So I don't know if I. I got you. Head. Okay, cool, cool. I can see what it is. Line 47, copy line 47. Cool. And then scroll down. On line 53, drop a new line, paste, uh, delete that secondary div. Cool. On line 60, drop a new line. At, perfect. Get rid of that secondary div. Reload the, uh, save it, reload, let's see what happens. Oh, cool, yay. <laughs> nice. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, you uh, you missed the opening day, which I do a bunch of times. So, no worries. Cool, thanks for that. I'm surprised it was still working with un unmatched closing divs. <laughs> yeah, it was weird because browser. one of the like, really big and then it like first it had the one small and then the other one was really big and then I did a thing and then it was like two big ones next to each other and I'm like okay I don't know what I'm doing anymore yeah that's what I was that's why I was able to look for that first I was like I bet it's missing this width command anybody else want to share their screen awesome can I see your uh, CSS page again yeah actually why don't I do you one better and share the CSS page, the master CSS page I was working with. Actually, no, I'll do exactly what you said. I will share my screen. Your idea was the best. Which thing in particular are you looking at? Uh, pretty much the white drop shadow and cool. uh, then the, the extra my cards stuff after uh, my my cards container. It should all be in the chat. Okay. You can copy it over from the chat and then paste it on new lines. Just make sure that there's closing brackets from the previous ones okay. so that they're not nested inside of each other. Um, also, the white drop shadow um that piece of code there was a reference to it i believe austin on the html in the yeah. uh, jumbotron so um just ross i just want to make sure you didn't miss that in case thank you in, inside of the jumbotron after display four we're gonna do a space white drop shadow and after lead space white drop shadow Much better. Now, these web pages are not hyper personalized quite yet, but go feel free to go in, replace the lore mipsum with your own writing. Feel free to play around with CSS. There's great YouTube videos that are very specific things about CSS. Go learn about Bootstrap. The Bootstrap version we are using is 4.6. It's not the latest, but it is the latest stable version. Um, the newest version of, of Bootstrap does deprecate Jumbotron, so it's not great for our purposes, but there are other workarounds for it if you want to figure that out. 
Um, and yeah, if you want to learn how to deploy a web page like this, please come to our mini jumpstart or our jumpstart. We have weekend uh, seminars here at Learn where we go through building out HTML, CSS, and JavaScript web pages. And uh, we also deploy those so that your friends and family can see them. Is there anything else I can help you, all, you guys with right now? Tanya? Um, my only question is if you could share your um, HTML page. Um, yeah. I'm a little stuck on, on the wrapper and, and like the section for the cards, but I was just planning going back to the video and kind of figuring that out. Yeah, I can share that with you right now. That's the actual files now in the chat and the wrappers work like this. So oddly enough, I just have one section tag earlier around this P tag. Um, that was more scaffolding from what we were doing earlier to get used to the idea. I could honestly delete this right here and delete this and that won't change anything. But the section tag that matters is the my cards container. And that wraps around all three of the cards. Let's see if I can get this. Now you can see how it wraps around all three of the cards mm -hmm. with the class my cards container. Rebecca, there's a person sitting behind you whose arm looks like they're booping the nose of the cat. That's my fiance and he's playing league. That's awesome. Yeah, we share a room. <laughs> my, uh, my wife works right next to me, so I have my desk here and she has her desk right here. Yeah, it's hard during work because then we have to pick each other out for meetings. Yes. Yeah. Not desirable. <laughs> yeah, we do the same. Cool. Well, who's stoked about their own first website? Spend time with it. One of the things with CSS is the probably the best way to learn CSS is to beat your head against a wall with CSS and try to make it work. Um, but there's a bunch of really great tools CSS brings in. There's styling, formatting, uh, how things are centered is really complicated, getting things to it work in the right way stylistically is real. It can be really frustrating and complicated, but also amazing. Um, and HTML does a lot on its own as well, but we've done a ton today. Great job, everybody. Uh, and feel free to uh, email me. I am austin at learnacademy.org. Um, and it'll be the same. Uh, back end for Nancy, the at learnacademy.org, just put it in my name. Feel free to message Nancy. Nancy, do you wanna wrap it up for us? Sure, yes. Yeah. So as Austin mentioned, um, uh, if you guys are interested in learning how to deploy a website, we invite you to our next workshop, which is happening in a couple weeks on um, August 13th through 15th. It's a whole weekend. Um, I believe it's like, it's 20 know, hours yeah like 120 hours of coding 20 hours yeah so um let me know if you're interested in that and i can send you a um a promo code so that um you can uh, get registered for free and um yeah we thank you for for spending your saturday with us and you know we we hope you're you know, satisfied with your, your website. And yeah, feel free to um, shoot me an email or Austin an email if you have any questions. We will follow up with you guys on um, Monday uh, with that um, uh, YouTube link. So you can refer back to this session if you had any, um, any notes or questions you, you wanted to um, refer to. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much, you guys. Um, 
I uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Saturday and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Have a great day. All right, thanks everybody. All right. Recording.